You have 64. Okay. Okay. Welcome to this Trimedia Zaleski Sports presentation of the Division 5 WIAA State Football Championship game between the Stratford Tigers and the St. Mary Springs Ledgers. And we'll bring on Steve Maves here in just a moment, but this is the game I think most people were waiting for all afternoon. It's our third game here of the day as we saw Blackhawk Wets and claim the Division 7 title. And just moments ago, the Iola Scandinavia T-Birds overwhelm the Racine Lutheran uh, team and uh, our state champions in Division 6. Uh, the Crusaders uh, lost that game 43-14 to the T-Birds. And now we are just about uh, set here uh, for football at Camp Randall Stadium as the National Anthem begins to play on the field. We will take a short moment to acknowledge our nation's flag and then bring Steve Maves into the broadcast after that.
as uh, today's national anthem is sung before this Division 5 final by what looks to be a, a decent-sized contingent of uh, St. Mary Springs Ledger students down there and a cappella version of the national anthem. And again, Steve, uh, as we bring Steve Maves into the broadcast here, who will take you through today's play-by-play -play of this Division 5 state championship game. Uh, we take a look here at Camp Randall. We were full sun up until the fourth quarter of the D6 game, and now we are almost full shade here at the stadium. The lights are on, and the lights are on for this big D5 uh, challenge here as we see the east ring of Camp Randall and the names that look down on these players. Schaefer, Schreiner, Richter, Hirsch, Dane, Amici, and uh, perhaps some of these names on these kids' jerseys could be uh, lining Randall, uh, Camp Randall at one point in time. But before we get that far ahead of ourselves, Steve, tell us what we need to know about this uh, D5 title game. Well, just looking at the Stratford Tigers coming in at 11-2 and two overall, 5-1 and one in the Merrowood Conference, head coached by Jason Tubbs in his sixth season. They, this is their... This is their eighth state championship appearance. They are 7-0 and in state championship games. Their last one was back in 2008. They have 33 playoff appearances, 32 of the last 33 years they have been in the playoffs. The last non-playoff year was 1991. They average offensively 37.5 points per game. They are led rushing by Kate Erke, 240 rushing attempts on the year, 1,945 yards, 29 touchdowns. Defensively, just 10 and a half points a game, 123 yards, 52 through the air, 71 rushing. That is the Stratford Tigers again out of the Merrowood Conference. They finish second to the Edgar Wildcats. The St. Mary Springs Ledgers they are being announced right now out of the south end zone. They are, or they finished 13 and 0 overall, 5 and 0 in the fly flyway conference. Head coached by Bob Highland, who has 463 career wins. He has 15 state titles under his belt, eight as part of WISA, uh, the Catholic version back in the day. He again is in his 48th season. They are 7-3 and three in this is their 12th WIAA state appearance, 7-3 and three, the Division 6 state champions a year ago. They averaged 38 and a half points a game, led offensively by a, a name that we will probably say all day long, Cade Christensen mm -hmm. who has 50, rece or 50 receptions on the year, one over 1,000 receiving yards on the year. They only give up 6.4 points a game. They have not given up any points in the first quarter this year, giving up 139.1 yards per game. So it is Bob Highland leading, off, leading this Ledger's team again. They will be kicking off to the Stratford Tigers as Stratford lines up to receive, working from south to north. Stratford will be working north to south, left to right as we see it here at Camp Randall Stadium. Well, Steve, thanks for that uh, great introduction here. The Tigers will receive first, and uh, Jason here with the Zaleski Sports Show, Kevin Bargander working at another feverish <laughs> pitch pace at getting those uh, T-Bird highlights up, and they'll be available soon at Zaleski Sports Show on Facebook. You can already watch Edgar Blackhawk highlights. Those are on the page and have been now for the last uh, couple hours. And these highlights will be up. And then highlights of this game uh, later on tonight as uh, Kevin again will be working as we traverse up I-39 uh, back towards uh, central Wisconsin. And we'll get these uh, Tiger Ledger highlights up for you later tonight. But, yeah, this kind of been the game that a lot of people have been waiting for today. It's it's really a culture clash. I think it's a, it's a high-paced, higher-tempo offense of the Ledgers. And uh, Cade Christensen, one of the finest athletes in the state of Wisconsin, going up against a defensive-minded run game 
and uh, just a ground and pound team like the Stratford Tigers in the pregame last week as the Tigers uh, took down the Spencer Columbus Rockets. We talked to Coach Tubbs pregame on air. I asked him his keys to victory, and he said, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And if I asked him again this, uh, today, it w his answer would have been identical. <laughs> and that's what the Tigers are going to have to do today. They're going to have to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, keep the ledger offense and Mr. Christensen off the field. They're going to have to win and participate in a low-scoring game in a game that they may need that last possession and Kay and and the gang to get down on the field and, uh, and maybe score uh, with, uh, with zeros on the clock. That's kind of what I'm thinking if Stratford's to stay competitive in this game. Uh, otherwise, uh, if the ledgers uh, are allowed to kind of romp up and down the field, uh, this game could be done early here today, and that's, uh, uh, that's just coming from me. That's my opinion of, of what, uh, what could happen here as we go through the game, and you are all uh, listening along to uh, Steve uh, taking you gracefully play-by-play -play, uh, through the thing, and then you know, I'll come in uh, clumsily every now and then and tell you <laughs> something you, you probably already knew. But th that, to me, I think is, is what's going to take place here. It's either going to be a high-scoring game, and the Tigers are not, uh, I don't think, equipped for that, or it's going to be a low-scoring defensive battle, and it's going to be a grind all the way to the end. And our grind is going to start right now with the kickoff. Levi Poss working, and he will kick it. A uh, line drive kick will be taken at the 13-yard line up to the 15, the 20. Taking left side to the 30, and gets a nice block, and that is exactly where Stratford will start, the 44-yard line. What a great opportunity for Stratford here early on. Yeah, Chase Flink uh, came over. Uh, he's uh, new on the team this year. Uh, came over from a school uh, just a little bit west of Stratford and uh, he's come on here and he's done some good things during the year and he's got his Tigers set up on the 44. Uh, they are just uh, about two yards to the left of the Wisconsin W on the middle of the field here at Camp Randall. Max Schwabe will be quarterback for the Stratford Tigers. He works under center. Kate Erke behind him. They end around to Derek Martin and he falls inside St. Mary territory to the 48 and a half yard line and it's going to be second down for Stratford. Nice run there on the first play of the game. Six foot 180 pound senior Stephen Hopner uh, collects his first tackle of the game. Uh, Hopner uh, defensive back as the play came around to the outside. He stepped away from his receiver coverage and in to make the tackle on Martin. 3,500 yards on the ground for Stratford this year as a team. Full house backfield. They give it to Erkey on the far side. Spin move to the 45 inside St. Mary territory and to the 41-yard line for Stratford. They're working that far side, but working so far in a nice first down for the Tigers. Now that spin move just when uh, number 79 Billy Schroth had uh, Erkey in his sights. Uh, Cade spun back to the inside to his left and then lurched forward for another few yards and the uh, Tigers quickly into ledger territory. Cade again over 1,900 yards on the ground this year. He stands split back behind Schwabe again. He, they're going to pitch it to Erke near side. Has room, has a nice block, and steps away from the 40 to the 35 to the 30. Stays in bounds, and it will be another first down for Stratford at the 30-yard line. Yeah, it took uh, Marcus uh, Orlandoni uh, a 20-yard run on the ledger side of the ball to chase down Kate Erke, and, and what a start here for the Tigers, and uh, the Tigers go to uh, congratulate uh, their teammate uh, Kate Erke, and it was uh, big number 68, uh, I believe it was, coming in there for the Tigers to tell Kate a job well done. First and 10 at the 22-yard line, on balance line, they're going to give it to the far side, and it's going to be met immediately and driven back and it's going to be number 19, Chase Flink. Yeah, and that was actually Easton Kelly who came back to uh, offensive uh, guard there for the Tigers who came back to uh, congratulate Cade. And again, uh, defensive backs for the Ledgers come flying up the field. And Mr. Hopfner again, his second tackle on the day after a two-yard gain by Erke. Good Strafford contingent on the far side coming down here to Camp Randall for the first time in 10 years as fans of the Stratford Tigers. They're going to give it to Erke on the near side, and this Ledger's defense swarms Erke to the 20-yard line. Yeah, that was number 35 again, or Orlandoni, linebacker for the Ledgers. He's a 5'11", 210-pound junior, and he came up right up the middle this time to make the stop. The last stop he made, he had to run about 20 yards. <laughs> that time he ran about one, and it's a third and long now upcoming for the Tigers. 
Third and eight ball on the 20 yard line of Saint or of the Leisures. 9.40 to go in the opening quarter. Full house backfield for Stratford. Erke stands behind Schwabe. Going to give it up no, to the second guy, and he's going to fall forward. That's Derek Martin. And it's going to be fourth down at the is that 17 yard line of the Ledgers. Yep, and Orlandoni again in on the tackle. He's racking up tackles here left and right as he's kind of found his groove and see what Coach Tubbs here uh, would choose to do. You would think a 34-yard field goal probably out of the range uh, of uh, uh, Reed Austin, who I believe is their uh, normal, or Reed Curtis, my apologies, their normal kicker for the Tigers, Reed Curtis. Not on the field. Offense back on the field, Steve. Full or Two running backs behind Schwabe, and they're going to give it to the second guy, and they're going to go to Martin again on the end of round. Reversing, he's got it to the 10, to the 5, gets ripped out of bounds at the 3-yard line. First and goal for the Tigers. Vaughn Bright, big wide receiver for the Stratford Tigers. Vaughn comes in at 197 pounds. He's six foot four, junior, wears number 7, led the way on that end of round for Martin. It looked for a moment like Martin may be able to sprint and, and beat the Ledger defender into the end zone, but it was uh, Mitchell Wachter uh, came in. He's a 185-pound, six-foot-three senior. Save the day for now for the Ledgers. First and goal from the three. 8:50 to go here in the opening quarter. Stratford marching down the field, trying to get on the board early, and they're going to give it to Erky on the right side. Has room. Going to fall forward, get ripped down, and inside the one goes Kate Erky. Yeah, Cade Christensen, we'll go ahead and call his name for the first time. He was in on that stop. Uh, if they are given half tackles today, that would be a, a, a half a tackle there for Christensen, who essentially just got in the way, but that ball now uh, just perilously close to the goal line. It stands at the one-yard line, and the Tigers are one yard away from striking first here. 8.20 left on the clock. Second goal, or second down and goal from the one. Schwabi under center, three backs behind him. And they're going to give it to Erke on the left side, and he's going to get met immediately, and he's going to fall in for the touchdown. Touchdown Stratford with 8.05 to go in the first quarter. The first points given up in the first quarter by Springs all year. Well, I'll tell you, Kate Erke made all that happen. He took number 36, Ezra Tucker, 175 pounds, 6'1", senior, and he took him into the end zone with him. Eric, he was not to be stopped that time as he hit that far hash and bowled his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Stratford on the board on their first drive. Very, very impressive first drive. They go eight plays, 55 yards into the end zone, and Reed Curtis and to attempt the PAT, 27 of 33 on the year, and that one is high, and it is perfect. With 8.05 to go in the first quarter, it is Stratford 7 and St. Mary Springs nothing. Draxler Transport is committed to providing our customers and drivers with safe on-time deliveries. Today's economy demands we consistently meet our customers' ever-changing needs. Our customers can be rest assured knowing our top priorities are to represent them and ourselves in the most professional manner possible while always keeping safety and on-time deliveries our top priority. Draxler Transport, commitment, safety, professionalism. Opportunities at Draxler Transport for $65,000 annually. Apply right now at DraxlerTransport.com. Experience the difference at Badger Title. Badger Title is Wisconsin's first full-service title insurance company. See Badger Title for extensive closing services, title insurance, letter reports, along with construction disbursements and inspections. Since 2001, Badger Title has been serving central Wisconsin with quality work that is second to none. Talk to Cheryl and Davina at Badger Title at 715-389-2900 or visit badgertitle.net. Back to Camp Randall Stadium here in Madison, Wisconsin for this Division 5 state championship game between the Stratford Tigers and St. Mary Springs Ledgers and Stratford marches right down the field. Again, nine plays, 56 yards, three minutes and 55 seconds is all it took for the Tigers to get on the board here in the first quarter. 56 yards, all rushing, three first downs, 0 for 1 on third downs, but it is a big, impressive, and very useful drive for the Tigers to get on the board 7-0 early over a Springs team again that hadn't given up a point in the hadn't given up a point in the first quarter this year. 
Well, as I said, Steve, it's exactly what the Tigers are going to have to do to, to keep pace in this game. They're going to have to run the ball, run the ball, and then run the ball some more, and it's, it's, it's exactly what they did on their first drive, and they did it to perfection with a touchdown. Reed Curtis, a long kick. He'll be taken out the five-yard line up to the 10, the 15, and get a nice blocking tripped up nicely there by Colton Schillinger. Yeah, Schiller came flying up there and stayed in his lane, and that's important on, on the kick return or the kickoff team and kick coverage. Uh, you can imagine you got 11 guys and they're spaced out evenly from one sideline all the way to the other. And general rule of thumb is you stay in your lane. You've got about one yard to your left, one yard to your right. The theory is if everybody stays in that one lane without breaking those barriers, you're going to be able to make that tackle, and that's what he did there. St. Mary Springs will take over first and 10 at the 20 yard line back to pass and it's going to be caught on the near side up to the 30 and ripped down and that is Joseph Hanlon with yeah, the reception. That was a 10 on 10 action there yeah. as uh, Hanlon wears number 10 and number 10 Eli Drexler for the Tigers and it's a seven, seven, strong 7 yards out there for the Ledgers on first down. That's we predicted St. Mary Springs the weather is very nice, a uh, little windy, but they're going to be out to pass. The splits are huge on the offensive line. Up the middle, there's going to be a penalty on uh, Springs. It's going to yeah, be a false start. Yeah, that play is uh, not going to happen. A procedural penalty there, uh, pre-snap penalty by the Ledgers, and part of those seven yards are not going to be erased with the five-yard false start. There is going to be a false start to on the second play for Springs, they find themselves behind 7 and nothing. place that they have rarely, rarely been this year, if not the last handful of years, as they have not given up many points at all this yeah. year. Inside handoff here is going to go just for a couple as a pile of Tigers and a pile of Ledgers kind of did battle right in the middle of the field there. Uh, and it was uh, number 35 on the run. Uh, 35, we've called his name on defense. Now we call his name on offense for the first time, Marcus Orlandani. Orlandani, the leading rusher, 201 attempts on the year. 1,226 yards on the ground. It's going to be a big third down, back to pass. Has him near side. It's going to be tipped at the line and incomplete. A great stop by the Stratford Tigers after scoring, getting a three and out, and Stratford will get the ball right back. Dylan Shaner, uh, right end there for the Tigers, got his big paw up and knocked that ball down, and the ball was going for, guess who, Cade Christensen. He was the target on that play. Uh, Dylan Shaner made sure that there was no target going to be hit as he uh, swatted the ball down. And uh, fourth down now and a punt upcoming for the Ledgers. Springs will be back to punt and takes a couple steps in. It will be taken at the 33-yard line near side. Chase Flink's going to get wrapped up right at the 35, and that is exactly where Stratford will begin. Drive number two at the 35-yard line. Yeah, good uh, good punt coverage there, and it's essentially the same concept as, uh, as kickoff. Uh, yeah, your guys... You, you go down, you stay in your lane. Uh, you may you may shade a little bit more on a, on a punt uh, coverage. You know, the Ledgers did not there. They stayed in their lane. And uh, Carlos uh, Ozels, 170-pound, uh, six-foot senior uh, Ledger defensive end and running back, came down and made the tackle on Flink right where he caught the ball. No uh, no return on the punt. Three receivers bunched up to the far side. Going to give it up to Erky up the middle and fall forward to around the 40-yard line. A nice gain of five on the opening play of the drive. Yep, and again, uh, racking up tackles left and right here are the Ledgers. Ezra Tucker in on the stop there. And uh, just like we've uh, mentioned a couple times in those first two games, stuff the stat sheet with tackles, but that means the other team's uh, able to move the ball down the field, and uh, Tigers' big gain on first down puts them in a manageable second and five. Schwabe under center. Erke stands just two yards behind Schwabe. Again, same formation, and this time he's going to get eaten up, a loss of a yard for Kate Erke. Yeah, number 54, Jacob Kaufman, uh, come up from his linebacker spot there and filled the hole that was created for Erke and uh, filled it quite nicely, coming on the stop, and it's actually a loss of one on the play. Third and long, now, or third and six now for the Stratford Tigers. 5.40 to go in the opening quarter, 7 and nothing in favor of the Tigers. Three receivers bunched up to the far side. Derek Martin, the tight end to the near side. Erke stands behind Schwabe. That one's going to be passed to the far side. Going to be taken and run over. He's going to get the first down. A big hit, but a first down. That is Chandler Schmidt with the reception and the run. 
Yeah, Chandler Schmidt, uh, pitcher for the Stratford Tigers uh, baseball team. Uh, nice shooting guard for the Tigers, and this time he was shooting his way down the field on the pass reception. Shot his way past one ledger and then plowed through the next for the first down. First and 10 now for Stratford Tigers. 5.15 to go in the opening quarter. Sun setting behind us on the western side of the field. Everybody pretty much in the dark right now as Zerke takes the toss and he's going to fall around the 48-yard line again with a couple. It's going to be second and eight. You know, Steve, they say football is a game of inches, and, and that is definitely right, and you can dissect that anyway. You can find inches all over the field. Well, that time, uh, number uh, 15, Oakley Wrench, uh, came back from his receiver spot, turned around, and uh, blocked for Eric e coming out of the backfield and allowed Eric e to get that extra yard or two there. And so that uh, heads-up play uh, enabled the uh, Tigers to get three on first down instead of one, and that can make all the difference sometimes. Second and seven going to be... Giving up again, Turkey up the middle. He's going to get tackled right on the W of Wisconsin at the 50-yard line, a gain of a yard, and it's going to be third and six. Uh, Tucker on the stop there for the ledgers. He saw that coming the whole way and uh, beat, uh, again, some of these ledgers uh, linebackers now able to, to beat the Tigers to the hole, and uh, we'll see if that aggressiveness, if Coach Tubbs and the uh, Tiger coaching staff able to take advantage of that ledger aggressiveness, start to run some counteraction or some end around and to get them out of that aggressive stance. Third and five coming up now as the ball is on the Wisconsin W. 71 yards so far on offense for Stratford. All of them with on the ground. Now it's going to be a rip down Schwabi with the get sacked by Orland, Orlandoni. Yeah, Orlandoni saved probably a touchdown there with the sack as Vaughn Bright had beat his guy uh, down the, the near side here as he took off on his route just outside of the near hash marks. Uh, he was open at around the 20-yard line. He was open by about three steps. He would have walked into the end zone from there, but Schwabi couldn't uncork the pass before he was sacked. Fourth and a long 13 with 3.15 to go. Back to punt. And a good punt there by Flink. Going to be... And it's going to be hit off of the ledger's returner, but be mm. quickly recovered and fell on by the ledger's returner. So it's going to be first and ten for the it's going to be first and ten for the St. Mary Springs ledgers, and that is where they're going to start. First and ten with 3:08 to go. Third, first and ten on the 32-yard line. We'll be back after this. Looking for reliable, high-speed internet? Look at Country Wireless. Country Wireless provides reliable, high-speed internet to rural central Wisconsin with unlimited data, no usage caps, and speeds up to a blazing fast 7 meg. Want faster? Contact Country Wireless now to see if you qualify for 50 meg service and then take advantage of all the internet has to offer. Go to countrywireless.com to get on your way to high-speed internet. Introducing the new way to survive planning a party. Hire Gabrielle Linen Company to do all of the preparation, setup, shopping, decoration, and cleaning for you. Gabrielle Linen Company is a local party planning business with pricing options to fit any size budget. Call Gabrielle at 715-630-4381 or go to GabrielleLinenCompany.com for more details. Gabrielle Linen Company for your next event. Back to the Division 5 state championship game. Steve Mapes alongside Jason Zaleski Stratford with a very impressive opening drive going for, uh, 56 yards in the touch, or for the touchdown and had a nice little drive going here before the St. Mary's Springs defense was able to stuff them and force a punt and Springs will start at their own 32-yard line on their second possession of the game. Yeah, that sack really did in that drive. Again, uh, if Von Bright doesn't score a touchdown, if Schwab is able to connect with him, Stratford's at least set up in the 20. Now it's a punt, uh, and the ledger's back with the ball. 308 and got s smoked by the yeah. Stratford defender. Jacob Michelson coming in, flying in there from the outside. Michelson uh, doing a good job all year. Uh, Michelson, one of those Tigers that's been in the Zaleski Sports Show highlight <laughs> house before. And as we see his performance here, uh, he slipped right through the, the tackle guard uh, hole right there. He kind of swam uh, swam under. A uh, nice swim move uh, for Michelson there. And uh, got right in on the tackle and uh, no gain on the play. 
Two receivers near side, two to the far side. Back to pass, and it's going to be caught on the far side and run over the defender. It's like yeah, Jake, uh, Jake Hoke on the catch out there for uh, for the Ledgers, and uh, Ledgers got size all over the place. Hoke, yeah. uh, essentially a, a really a fullback out there, man, uh, you know, a little bit bigger than a traditional running back. He's 6'3", 190, and he glided to the outside, picked up about four, and it's going to be third and six upcoming for St. Mary Springs. Two minutes and ten seconds in this opening quarter, just flying by. Not a lot of stoppage on either side. Kate Christensen lining up near side, a receiver to the far side. Two two split backs and they're going to roll out to the left. He's just going to throw it up to Christensen near side and it's going to be incomplete at the 25 yard line. And nice defense there by Eli Drexler. I tell you Steve, Drexler didn't know right away that pass was coming and it was a it was a go route. It was just a straightforward route by Christensen to run as fast as he could. The ball was put in the place he could have caught it and Drexler just at the last moment got his got his head around and jumped up to just disturb now the pass, he didn't knock down the pass, but he just did just enough to get in the way of Christensen and bring his uh, Tigers into a fourth down situation, forcing a punt. And it uh, looks like the Tigers get the ball back here yet in the first quarter. Yeah, Springs will be back to punt for the second time here in the first quarter. That one got blocked, and it's going to be up in the air. And Stratford just wants to get away from the ball, and they are going to have fantastic field position. And... Don't quite see a number yet. Yeah, well, it was a 62 on the Reed block. Curtis. 62 is Reed Curtis coming in on the block. He slipped his way through uh, the Ledger offensive line. As we take a look here at the replay at Camp Randall, we'll see how Curtis was able to get through as he was lined up on the left side, uh, or no, he was lined up on the far side of the uh, of the Ledger uh, punt team there. And uh, he just came right through. Actually, he came uh, right uh, just right up the middle there. He was unblocked, untouched. Derek Martin with it now. He's going to go to the outside and get ripped out of bounds after a gain of a couple. And with 1.37 to go, Stratford looking to, add to add, or try to add on to this seven-point lead over the Springs team. Yeah, walked her uh, another tackle there on the outside. And uh, uh, we'll see you here what the Tigers can do. But so far, everything going their way. Everything yep. lining up exactly like they, they essentially needed to go here. Uh, to, to take a, a high-powered offense like uh, like the Ledgers and keep them on the sidelines, and that's where they are right now. Under center, Schwabe again. He's going to pitch to Erke near side, make a cutback, but this Springs defense just swarms to the ball with four or five defenders every time getting to the ball, and it's going to be a loss of a yard, and it's going to be back to the 40-yard line, third and eight. Yeah, again, Steve, uh, I think the Stratford coaches are going to have to find a way to counteract this aggressive uh, linebacker action for the Ledgers. Uh, the linebackers are just, they're, they're, they're flowing right through that Stratford offensive line, and uh, the Ledgers only use three down linemen. They essentially <laughs> run a 3-4 a or a maybe even a 3-5 type defense here, although now they do have four down linemen, but it allows those linebackers to get right through there, and the undersized Tiger offensive line not up to the challenge yet. Schwabe back to pass now, looking for him, has his receiver up the middle, Vaughn Bright to the 10, to the 5, touchdown! Holy man, there's Vaughn Bright in action. Um, it just a, a tremendous pass, a tremendous look by Schwabe. He had missed him on that last possession and hit him as he ran a post route, and he ran the post route right down the middle of the football field here at Camp Randall Stadium. Uh, did it like a, like a college football player would do it here on a Saturday afternoon. He scores and puts his Tigers up 13-0. Vaughn Bright with his third touchdown of the year and 19th reception of the year. And a, like Jason just said, a perfectly run route. Schwabe met him perfectly across the middle and into the end zone. Stratford with a 13 to nothing lead. Yeah, that was a fun one to watch because, like I said, he really he hit his marks on the field as the extra point goes up and through. Uh, but a bright, as, as a receiver, you're taught there are certain – uh, landmarks on the field, right? Maybe it's a hash mark, or it's a it's a certain mark on the field, or it's your fifth stride, whatever it is. But those are all called your marks on the field. And he hit his marks, and as he hit that fifth step or that hash mark, he turned into the post. It was a crisp route that he broke off, uh, just like if you're snapping a piece of spaghetti. He broke his route right to the right to the post in the middle, an easy pitch and catch for the touchdown, and uh, Tigers up 14 nothing. Stratford goes three. Three plays, 42 yards, 57 seconds, and 
And a 40-yard touchdown pass from Max Schwab and Devon Bright. Stratford out to a 14 to nothing lead. Reed Curtis will be back to kick for the Stratford Tigers at the 40-yard line, working from north to south, left to right. A straight-on kick and a high end over end kick. He'll be taken. Yeah, muffed back there. He's got Christensen's going to have to pick that up and run with it, and he does. At the five-yard line, has it up the middle. He's going to run over a Stratford defender, but it's or Stratford kick coverage, and it's going to be first and ten at the 19-yard line for St. Mary Springs. Well, the Ledger's going to have to get it together here. Uh, that was uh, just another in a series of events that happened uh, that happened negatively for the Ledgers there with their star player Christensen muffing the kickoff. And it was a, a broken coverage and, and really just it was a great route by, by Bright. Bright beat his guy. Uh, but there's been a series of events here that have the Ledgers behind 14 nothing in the first quarter. They're going to give it up the middle. And it was on the ground. Shefford might see if they're going to mark him down. And they will say that the runner was down at the 20 one and a half yard line, 22 yard line is where they'll put him down. Yeah, that was Ben Barton on the tackle and uh, Mr. Barton is uh, gonna enjoy this experience here today, but this will not be his last time at, at Camp Randall. Uh, ben Barton verbally committed to the Badgers just a few weeks ago, and he will come here uh, to Wisconsin to play as an offensive lineman in two years. He's only a junior here for the Tigers. After one quarter of play from Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, after or in the Division Five state championship game, Stratford leads the St. Mary Springs Ledgers 14 to nothing. We'll be back at the second quarter after this. Clear your calendars for December 9th and have an experience like no other. It's the Toys for Tots Piano Guys concert at the Performing Arts Center in Wisconsin Rapids. Join us at this fantastic benefit concert featuring the dueling piano talents of the new Piano Guys to benefit the community of Wisconsin Rapids and Toys for Tots Toy Drive. Go to Facebook now and search Toys for Tots Piano Guys Wisconsin Rapids. Tickets are available now for this fun event and a great cause. It's the Toys for Tots Piano Guys concert in Wisconsin Rapids on December 9th. Marshfield Family Restaurant on South Central Avenue in Marshfield is ready for their grand opening on November 20th. The new team at Marshfield Family Restaurant has a great menu and a new look at service as this iconic downtown Marshfield restaurant reopens. Marshfield Family Restaurant is also open on Thanksgiving for you and your family to enjoy a no-fuss, no-cleanup Thanksgiving dinner. Marshfield Family Restaurant with their grand opening on Tuesday, November 20th, located at 443 South Central Avenue in Marshfield. We start the second quarter here from the Division Five State Championship game. St. Mary Springs will start second and seven at the 22. That first quarter dominated by the Stratford Tigers. They couldn't have went any better for the Stratford Tigers. There's no doubt about that. And, and they've got this 14-point cushion. And if you're coming into this game assuming Springs is going to score 25, 30 points, uh, the Tigers are, are halfway to that mark right now. And it's only... And there's still three quarters left to play. So even if Springs is able to, say, do what a lot of folks think they can and score 30 in this game, Tigers are already halfway there, and they've got a chance at 30. And this uh, looks to be uh, a really good football game in the making here at Camp Randall. As just waiting for the go-ahead for the second quarter to start. Well, as we talked about in our initial broadcast, uh, they're still in a TV timeout. And the reason why this is happening is we're just better at it than yeah. they are. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know. TV's screwing up out there. You're probably having a bad experience with that. So we appreciate you joining in and uh, listening to us take you through this game. Springs will work now north to south, left to right, and going to be swallowed up again, met immediately. And Stratford with a great defensive play there. It's going to be third and seven from the 22. Well we talked, uh, I talked earlier about these Ledgers linebackers coming up and filling holes. Well that time it was uh, safety Max Schwabe uh, former quarterback yeah. uh, the, <laughs> still quarterback yeah. right but on the defense safety he filled that hole and uh, helped to bring down uh, the runner in the backfield. Again a third and a long seven for Springs back to pass looking pressure on it's going to be caught by Christensen near side tries to break a tackle but it's going to be a first down at the 36-yard line, 51st reception. Craig Christensen, one of the top athletes in the state, one of the best receivers in the state as well. 
Lance Heidman there on the coverage uh, did what he could just to contain Christensen after the catch. Uh, Christensen ran a nice, uh, a, a nice uh, out in, in, well, I mean, kind of a button hook, I guess, if you think old school football. Uh, but Heidman did a nice job there of after the catch, just bringing him down, stopping him right there. And it's going to be run to the outside. Has room up to the 35 to the 40. Got tripped up. Nice tackle there. Nice Boy. ankle tackle. Oakley Wrench came flying in from the other side. It didn't take the best angle. Kind of miss, misplayed the, the speed of Jake Hoke, uh, but got just enough as he was diving at Hoke and just hit his probably the bottom of his <laughs> cleat, probably one of the, the cleat nubs as yep. he was going under him and just swiped it just enough to stop him and keep him at a five-yard gain. It's going to be second and five. Play under ten and a half minutes to go here in quarter number two. Stratford lead 14 to nothing. Back to pass again. And it's going to be well underthrown and an incomplete pass attended for Joseph Hanlon. Yeah, a uh, little bit of pressure there put on as uh, he had to get rid of that ball a little sooner than he would have liked. Nice job by the uh, Stratford defensive line. A couple guys in there uh, to create that pressure. Had to get rid of the ball sooner than he would have liked and and uh, didn't just get the release on it uh, that you need to get to make that, that pass. Uh, ball spotted almost on the far hash, and he threw it all the way across the field to the boundary on the near side. Long throw to make with pressure in your face. Another third and long. Christensen lined up near side, back to pass. Going to look for him again, and now it's going to be over, the, over his head, and they throw it to Christensen just about every time, and that time well over his head and an incomplete pass out of bounds. And uh, Springs will be forced to punt again. Yeah, well, uh, give give it up here for the, the Stratford Tiger defense. Uh, you know, they are just doing the things that you need to do. Uh, they are they're they're hitting all their marks. They're they're completing blocks. They're uh, making tackles. They're doing everything that you need to do here just to to be in the lead of this game. And another great punt. That one's going to be taken out of the 25 to the far side. Has room and got smacked at the 35. Yeah, f Flink there, and, and we'll, we'll guide you through this here a little bit. Chase Flink goes 140 pounds, yeah. and I think that might be a little bit uh, <laughs> stretching it. And he ran into 250-pound senior Mitchell Burns, yeah. <laughs> and Burns leveled Flink right at the 35-yard line. And Stratford will take over, first and 10 at the 35, with 10-18 to go in the first half of this Division Five state championship game. Stratford scoring... A, couple, or a pair of touchdowns lead 14 and nothing. Springs outscoring their opponents 501 to 83. Back to pass again is Schwabe. Near side, that's Chandler Schmidt again, and he goes nowhere. Maybe lost a half a yard. It's going to be yeah, second and that was and uh, Hoke uh, coming out here on the defensive side of things and coming back to make that tackle. And uh, he's going to lose about a yard as Hoke came up real quick there to meet uh, Schmidt as he caught the ball. St. Mary Springs again only gives up about 139 yards a game, already 106 for the Stratford Tigers. They average a handful more than that, and they only have 26. That one's going to be up th uh, to the far side. Chase Flink will get ripped down at around the 30-70 yard line, gains two more back, and it's going to be third and eight. Yeah, Flink was trying to get a block there from number 74, Dawson Moan. Uh, and Moan just couldn't get in a good position uh, to get a block out there. Uh, the defender kind of beat Moan to that place that that block would have happened and able to bring down Flink. It was a gain of four on the play, but if Moan's able to get a block there, Flink's able then to turn the corner, head up field on that far side, and, and get, uh, get a lot more than four. Third and eight, 9.05 to go in the second quarter. Going to be back to pass to Schwabe again. They're going to throw it back near side. Derek That's Martin. something working here, it's Steve. Block. He's got it to the 40. Plenty of room to the 50, to the 45. Going to get ripped out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Well, I just told you about Dawson Moan. He could have done a better job with a block on that last play. This time, he was one of the people leading the way <laughs> on that uh, block that sprung Martin free. And then Matt Hendrick down here on the near side put the finishing touches on the next guy and uh, and allowed Martin to get all the way down the field here. As we watch the replay, we'll see number eight here, boom, right there on 36, Ezra Tucker. And uh, combo block there, Moan first, and then 10 yards later, Hendrick in a big gain for the Tigers. First and 10 for Stratford at the 43-yard line. They're going to give it to the far side. Chase Flink cuts up into the middle, and he fumbles the ball. And yeah, scramble for it down there. I don't know. Looks uh, it like looks like the Tigers do get it back, and they do. But, man, Flink again uh, kind of took one head on there. 
Uh, this time he was met by number 79, uh, Billy Schroth. Schroth goes 250 to, uh, to <laughs> Flink's, let's just say 120. Uh, and uh, a big collision there, and the ball jarred loose. Tiger's fortunate to fall back on it right on the 40-yard line. Jacob Mickelson with the recovery for Stratford at the 40-yard line. It's going to be second and seven. Up the middle goes Erke. He cuts back up the to the right side, and it's going to be a third and maybe a yard for the Tigers. Cade's just got a real, real talent for seeing the football field in front of him. He, he knows j uh, the right pace to run at. He's not always running full speed and, and beginner running backs and uh, youth football and that kind of thing. Oftentimes you see these kids, they've got to run full speed everywhere. <laughs> and as you learn more, you know how to pace yourself and then hit the hole when it develops. Eric, he did it there. Full house formation behind Max Schwab. He gives it to Erke. Cuts up the middle again to the 30. Falls forward inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. And another first down for the Stratford Tigers. Yeah, and Cade was our uh, highlight house player of the game last week. And for good reason, he had 280 yards uh, just a week ago. And uh, again this time, uh, he was patient uh, going to, to the far side as he reached that far hash mark. And as soon as he hit that hash mark, saw the hole in front of him, put his foot in the ground, and ran straight forward for the first down. First and 10 for Stratford. Their seventh first down of the game already. Going to pitch it out to Erke near side. And it's going to be taken in and... Uh, Derek Martin not able to hold up his block, and Erky's going to fall past. Oh, they're going to give him pretty good forward progress to the 29, even though he lost a couple of yards. Yeah, I would say it wouldn't have They mark it at the 29. It wouldn't have surprised me if that ball was marked beyond the 30 yeah. uh, from where that happened. So benefit there, the Tigers. Uh, Matthew Mole, 6'2", 168-pound senior, uh, brings him down. Defensive back out there. And uh, the receiver was no threat out there, so number two, Maul, was just able to, to move forward and, and wrap him up in the backfield. Second and 12 for the Tigers at the 29-yard line. Another full house backfield gives it up to Erky right up the middle. He's got it up inside the 15, and another first down for the Tigers. Dragging tacklers with him was Erky and uh, uh, Matthew Maul, again, called his name twice. This time he was one that took a ride. <laughs> it was a free ride on the K and Erky Express. And again, Dawson Moan out there making people uh, feel the pain as he's blocking these ledgers up and down the field. Uh, Moan doing a nice job creating holes for his Tigers, and they're set up nicely now from the 13. First and 10 from the 13 for the Stratford Tigers, trying to go up three scores on St. Mary Springs, Erky has it again up the middle, gets a nice block, staying up on his feet inside the 10 to the 9. And a gain of 4, but it's going to be another manageable and a very good gain on first down. <laughs> yeah, and Erky again, just being patient. Uh, he was uh, somewhat jogging through that hole, uh, shuffling his feet, and then turned sideways to make himself small as that hole started to, to, uh, to close down. Turned sideways. Uh, and then uh, shuffled forward uh, and, and made that nice run, but just creative, intelligent running here by Kate Erke. Under six minutes to go here in the first half. Going to give it near side. That one's going to be Derek Martin on the far side, or near side. He's going to fall forward to the seven-yard line, a gain of two, and it's going to be third and four. Nice job there by Martin, uh, keeping his top hand over the ball. Uh, as uh, you get this close to the end zone, you don't want to fumble anywhere, but as he's working the, the, the ball down the field here, kept the top hand over the ball, had, had four points covered on that football as we come up to five minutes to go here, making sure he was going to get a few yards, and he knew that. He knew it was just going to be a few, took what the defense gave him, and then let his Tiger teammates come out here on a third and four and attempt for a first down or perhaps more. Stratford, four of six out third down so far here today. Rolling out to his right is Schwabe. It's going to be a keeper. He's not going to make it. And he, no gain, no loss. And it's going to be fourth and four from the seven for Stratford. Yep, number 72 again, Jake Schroth for the Ledgers. Uh, he, again, he goes 6'3", 235. Uh, Schwabe goes 5'8", at yeah. about 130. <laughs> and uh, he was uh, he was met there handily in the hole. It was a nice job, though, by Schwabe just to, to scratch out back to that original line of scrimmage. And it looks like we're going to time out here from Stratford. Jason Tubbs will take his first time out for the Stratford Tigers with 4.31 to go. It's going to be fourth and four from the seven for the Tigers when we come back right after this. A great career is waiting for you at Rail Transport. Don't have your CDL? Then get paid to get your CDL. It's even better than free truck driver training. Rail Transport will train you to get your CDL and then pay you during the training. You'll be hired on day one 
paid $500 weekly and then trained by the leader in the trucking industry. Experienced drivers, you get 59 cents per mile. Start your career with a company that invests in you. Go to rail.jobs now and get your career started. Osterman Electric is your electrical contractor specializing in residential and commercial wiring. No job is too small and any job is the right size for Osterman Electric. Safety, quality, and dependability, not the norm at Osterman, it's the only expectation. The team at Osterman is ready for your call now at 715-937-3706 or see them on Facebook. Osterman Electric is your electrical contractor specializing in residential and commercial wiring. Back to Camp Randall Stadium here in the Division 5 State Championship game. Stratford Tigers 14, St. Mary Springs Ledgers nothing. It's going to be a fourth and four for the Tigers at the seven yard line. Have taken close to six minutes, six more minutes off of this clock. Springs has been unable to stop the Tigers so far. Steve, it would have been a 24 yard field goal attempt from here, but Coach Tubbs opts to keep his offense on the field. Now, Reed Curtis has made those field goals before, but Tubbs feels better chance here to score a touchdown. Full house backfield again. It's going to be Erky to the right side, and he is not going to make it. Maybe got up to the five-yard line. He's going to be two yards short. Yeah, that's just it. He, it's a third, it was a fourth and four, and he got halfway there, and halfway is not enough. Uh, Coach Tubbs thought maybe he had found something that he could run on on that right side and uh, didn't want to utilize uh, his, his field goal kicking unit in this situation. Um, and that's a coach's call to make the whole way. I, I'm not going to question him there. He just uh, it, Sometimes as a coach, you feel that you really got something figured out and you can make something happen over there, but the ledger defense up to the task that time. St. Mary Springs with all three timeouts remaining. They have it first and 10 at the five-yard line. And going to hand it off up the middle with room to the 10, holding out to that ball and pass the 10 to the 13-yard line. And it's going to be... A gain of seven, I believe, on the play. Yep, it's going to be second and three for St. Mary Springs. Yeah, had a helmet on the field there that time. The <laughs> helmet of Justin Shaner uh, came flying off, and Justin goes uh, to the sideline for the mandatory one play off there and get his helmet readjusted as uh, he was one of those in on the tackle. Receiver near side, one to the far side. I formation. And going to be given up and only make it, so oh, it's going to be close. Didn't give him a very favorable spot, but it's going to be third and short for the St. Mary Springs Sledgers. Yeah, Schwabi, the nearest Tiger, in on the uh, in on the stop there. And I'll tell you, where the uh, side judge came in and put his foot down, uh, the football got placed just a little bit uh, further up. Yep. It, it's not a first down. Uh, the first down has got to be on the 15-yard line. The nose of the ball is on about the, the 14, 2-foot, and 10-inch <laughs> line. It's going to be third and a very short one. Christensen, the running or the wide receiver near side, going to be up the middle, and he's going to get it to the 16, a gain of a yard and a half. Yeah, he got it, Steve, but he just got it. Uh, yep. He needed uh, 2 inches, and he got about 5 inches. And uh, Dylan Shaner in on the stop, uh, along with number 74, Dustin Moan, who goes over, uh, Dawson Moan, who goes over to the defensive uh, line now. And, and the defensive line, big for the Stratford Tigers. All those guys, uh, definitely uh, big size there as you, as you look across there. Uh, Michelson, 233. Moan at 262. Uh, Barton at 255. And Shaner at 240. Those are four guys there that are tough to run against. St. Mary Springs not in any hurry right now. They're starting to count a swing pass to the near side. Has him at the 20. Breaks a tackle to the 25. And it's going to be run out of bounds. And it's going to be a first down. No, maybe not a first down. They're going to say he ran out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And it's going to be a yard short. Yeah, and that was senior number 13, Lance Heidman, that did anything he could just to force him out of bounds there. I think Heidman may have uh, realized that he probably couldn't take on uh, number 36, Ezra Tucker, who goes uh, 175 and is 6'1". Instead, he nipped him at his ankles and forced him out of bounds. Two receivers, one near side, one far side, and a late handoff up the middle with the room to the 35, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, up the middle, foot race now to the 40, and he's going to run all the way to the 25-yard line. And it's going to be a huge gain for Springs inside Stratford territory. Yeah, Eli Drexler and uh, Heidemann uh, teamed up there on the touchdown saving tackle uh, as he had a whole head of steam there. 
uh, did Orland Doney, uh, but just not quite enough speed. And the speed from the Tiger defensive backs caught up to him, but again, not before a huge gain all the way down to the 26. Orlandoni doing it offensively and defensively for Springs right now. A big gain. They're going to give it to him again. No, he's going to keep it as the quarterback and falls inside the 25 for Orlandoni. Yeah, number 51, Dylan Shaner, thought he had something there in yeah. the backfield. He <laughs> thought he had a, a – whoever the – Whoever he thought the ball carrier was didn't have the ball, but he had him stopped, uh, and instead the, the carry went up the middle. And uh, it was a, a, a five-yard gain here, and it sets up the ledgers on a second and manageable from around the 22. Orlandoni's run, 49 yards, and he's going to be up the middle again. Same play, Orlandoni, and lots of great. Yeah, he's got it this time. the five touchdown, St. Mary Springs. Yeah, and you could see that one coming from a mile away. That was a nice draw play there that was executed by the Ledgers. And uh, they were just, uh, we talk about patience in football and waiting for things to develop. And that draw play, you can't do it too quickly. you got to let your offensive line get, get pushed down the field and let those defensive backs chase those receivers out of the way. So really you get that whole middle of the field to work with. And the whole middle of the field was <laughs> wide open. And it was an easy 22-yard touchdown run for Orlandoni. And you're going to attempt the PAT, Levi Poss. And don't see it very often, especially in a Division 5 or Division 6 team. Kick is through the uprights and good, but Le Levi Poss just only a K next to his name. He is a designated kicker for the St. Mary Springs Ledgers. That drive goes seven plays, 95 yards, two minutes and 52 seconds. Springs gets on the board with 134 to go in the first half. Stratford 14 and the Ledgers 7. Thanks, Steve. It is time to eat, and Scotty's Pizza and Chicken in Marshfield is today's pizza delivery choice for you. Scotty's is the world-famous home of the bacon, broccoli, and cheese pizza, along with other specialty pizzas to choose from. Chicken, sandwiches, salads, and a kid's menu make Scotty's Pizza the easy choice for the entire family. November is Hawaiian Chicken Month, and that means 20% off. See the menu online at scottyspizza.com or call 715-384-8118. Scotty's Pizza and Chicken. Draxler Transport is committed to providing our customers and drivers with the safe on-time deliveries. Today's economy demands we consistently meet our customers' ever-changing needs. Our customers can be rest assured knowing our top priorities are to represent them and ourselves in the most professional manner possible, while always keeping safety and on-time deliveries our top priority. Draxler Transport commitment, safety, professionalism, Opportunities at Draxler Transport for $65,000 annually. Apply right now at DraxlerTransport.com. Back to Camp Randall Stadium as you get the Stratford Tigers 14, St. Mary Springs Ledgers 7, going 95 yards in just 7 plays. 2 minutes and 52 seconds off the clock. A couple of big runs for Marcus Orlandoni, 49 yards up the middle, and then a 21-yard touchdown on the same play just to the out, just to the other side. And it is just a seven-point game. St. Mary Springs coming in 13-0 overall. Stratford at 11-2 Yeah, overall. the Ledgers did what they had to do there, Steve. They, they had to cut that Tiger lead in half. And as you said, 95-yard drive. And uh, it was you know, five yards, seven yards, three yards at a time, and just always moving the ball forward down the field. Mission accomplished. Now they'll put the defense back on the field to see if they can get the offense ball back before halftime. Line drive kick. That one's going to be taken near side, waiting for his blockers. Has room. And it's going to be taken down at the 31-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, Steve, they're going to have to, Tigers and coaching staff's going to have to talk to the, uh, the Stratford ball handlers about ball security. <laughs> uh, that ball was just kind of hanging out there uh, to the outside and, and easily could have been, uh, uh, been separated from the ball carrier there. I think that was Flink on, on, the, uh, on, on that run back, but they're going to have to uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, and with the uh, Ledgers with three timeouts left, uh, they do have a chance if the defense can do it, get the ball back yet before halftime. Stratford with... Two timeouts as well, and they're well. going to use a timeout without <laughs> using without the clock running, as Orlandoni was not out there to yeah, play a, defense. A miss, uh, a miss assignment there, as we were just saying. Uh, Ledgers had enough timeouts to get the ball back. Yeah. Well, now they had to burn one there, 
and uh, an unforced error uh, on the on the sideline, and don't exactly know. Uh, Orlandoni could have been getting some treatment or some uh, equipment uh, thing happening there on the sideline. But if that happens, next man up's got to get on the field. Yep. And uh, that's where the assistant coach has got to come in and, and make sure that everybody knows wherever he's got to be. And so uh, that's, a, that's a team error right there because if uh, you, know, you know where you are on the depth chart, coaches know where you are on the depth chart. And if you're not ready to go, the next guy's got to get out there, and that didn't happen. So the Ledger's now with two timeouts, a minute 27 uh, to work with. Uh, if they want to get their offense the ball back. The Tigers, a couple different goals here, I think, for Stratford, Steve. Uh, one is work all 127 off the clock. Yep. You'll always take going to halftime with a lead versus going into halftime without the lead. So uh, if they are able to, to erase this minute 27 off the clock, it'll be job well done for the Tigers with a 14-7 halftime lead. So opposing forces here, and uh, they come to the line here at the 31-yard line. First and 10 with 127 to go. Like Jason said, two timeouts apiece. For Stratford and Springs. That one's going to be handed up the middle, and Kate Erke trying to break a couple tackles but go nowhere. They're going to give him a yard to the 32, and no, neither team will take a timeout. They'll yeah, just Coach, Coach Highland here, uh, not quite ready for the timeout yet. Uh, there's a chance, uh, depending on the outcome of this play, they only gave up one yard there. Yep. If it's another short gain here, you would expect to see uh, Springs take one of those two timeouts. We play under a minute left to go here in the second quarter. Stratford a couple big scoring drives in the first quarter. And Springs answered back with a touchdown of their own. Near side, that's Derek Martin, I believe. And he's going to get ripped down and to the 41-yard line. And they will... Just let yeah, the clock run. Yeah, Coach Highland's going to let it roll here. Nice job there by Easton Kilty uh, for the Tigers to get out there and, and lead the way on that run and uh, get a, a big play there. It's only third and five, so uh, interesting situation here. And We take a look at Coach Tubbs, and I think he's telling his offense, don't even run a play, just stand there. Uh, it looks like he did send one in, but I don't think the Tigers are in any hurry here. As the clock ticks down to 10 seconds, they're going to take the ball into halftime with a 14-7 lead. Play under five. They are starting to count. They're going to give it to Erky. No, they're going to give it near side, and that will do it for the end of the first half here in the Division 5 State Championship game from Madison, Wisconsin at Camp Randall Stadium. Stratford Tigers with a 14-7 lead over the St. Mary's Springs Ledgers. We'll be back to give you a recap of the first half and get you ready for the second half in just a little bit. Again, Steve Mavis alongside Jason Zaleski, Kevin Bargander, and Sean Cordy, but we're going to step away for a quick second and come back to recap this first half, get you ready for the second half of this very exciting Division 5 state championship game.
All right, the halftime clock is at 30 seconds, and that means we are just about set for football again here at Camp Randall Stadium on the beautiful campus of the University of Wisconsin here in Madison. And it was uh, an intriguing first half of football, Steve Maves. Uh, Tigers 14, Ledgers 7. Uh, maybe didn't go the way that a lot of folks thought it might. Uh, some of us thought maybe it was going to be a higher scoring game or a little bit more up-tempo, but the Stratford Tiger defense, I think anyway, has really controlled the pace of this game along with the Tiger rushing attack. It's kept the Ledger offense on the sideline, and when the Ledger offense has been on the field, been a lot of Tiger defensive names called. Well, that Stratford, or Stratford dominated that whole for the first 20 minutes of the first half, and then after they were stopped on it, fourth and goal at the five-yard line, and... Uh, and St. Mary's Springs was able to put that big drive together to get their first touchdown. Other than that, Stratford, again, like you said, has dominated this first half over 100, at 176 yards on the, on the game, 116 on the ground, 60 through the air. They only have given uh, – St. Mary's Springs only averages – only gives up 139 yards a game. On the other hand, uh, St. Mary's Springs at 97 yards on the ground, 35 through the air. Max Schwabe for Stratford, two for two, passing 60 yards and a touchdown, the 40-yard touchdown pass to Vaughn Bright. Kate Erke, 17 rushing attempts, 71 yards and a touchdown. Derek Martin, seven rushes, 38 yards and no touchdowns. But again, just a dominant first half for Stratford offensively and like you said defensively as well holding holding a player like Cade Christensen just just a catch 14 yards but now they have to figure out how to take care of uh, Orlandoni as well. Well the Tiger defense is going to have to repeat the effort of the first half and if they do uh, Stratford uh, probably going to be holding the gold ball here in 24 minutes. Going to be taken by St. Mary Springs at the 20 yard line and he's going to get ripped down at the 34 and that's where Springs is going to start the second half with 11.54 to, or with just six seconds taken off on the kickoff here in Madison. We talked a bit coming into the game over on uh, on the a weekly sports show earlier this week, and others talked about it uh, as well. But uh, this uh, division, formerly Division Six, now Division t Five team, the Ledgers, took care of last year's champs Amherst, and yep. uh, we'll see here what they can do coming into this championship game in the second half. Run right up the middle, Orland. Don't he stand on his feet? Still going. It falls past the 40 to the 44 yard line. What a run by Marcus Orlandoni. Orlandoni just never gave up. He was swarmed under by three Tigers and uh, just kept his legs churning, kept his shoulders moving. He spun <laughs> his shoulders wickedly from left to right and spun him forward for the first down, finally brought down by Oakley Wrench. See what kind of changes Coach Bob Highland has made. He's been at it for 43 years, and Stratford meets him right at the uh, loss of a yard. That's Ezra Tucker on the carry, and he was met for a loss of a yard. All right, so Tiger defense activate, yeah. and they do there, and it's going to take, a, again, a lot more of that, and, and we'll see here how patient, and we talk a lot about patience in football, but now how patient can Coach Highland be for these ledgers to keep handing the ball off and keep hoping his running game can pick up big chunks of yards. It's going to be second and 11, going to give up the – to Ezra Tucker again. He's going to get swarmed under after a gain of a couple. And it's going to be third and a long seven for, yeah, for the Ledgers. Uh, Trevor Denis on the tackle. First time we've called Trevor's name today. He's a 180-pound, 5'10 junior for the Tigers and uh, caught, uh, caught the running back from behind uh, that time and brought him down for a gain of about four, four and a half on the play. Third and seven, ball at the 47-yard line, under 10 and a half to go in the third quarter. Two receivers near side, one far side. Back to pass, looking, and it's going to be dropped by Christensen at the 42-yard line, and it's going to be a fourth down for Springs here in the fourth quarter, or in the third quarter, excuse me. On Steve, the, the pass was dropped, uh, no yeah. doubt about that, but uh, there was a number 15, and we see on the replay here, uh, number 15, Oakley Wrench, kind of bearing down on Christensen. The pass was down around his knees. It was a tough catch to make, yep. uh, but Wrench certainly played a part in his in Christensen's periphery as he was uh, running right at him and uh, may have taken his focus off that ball. Fourth and seven now for Springs, and got the punt off, a high end over end punt. 
It's going to be taken by Chase Flink at the 17-yard line. Has room to the outside. Going to get ripped down at the 21, or at the 26, excuse me. Yep, taken down by number six, Cade Sable. Uh, Sable's 195-pound, 6'2", junior for the Ledgers and uh, uh, kind of caught him uh, from behind. There, were, uh, there was good coverage there put on by St. Mary Springs. Flink didn't have a whole lot of room to roam there, and he picked up about seven or eight on the return. Nice return considering the circumstances there. And again, the special teams playing a big part here uh, in today's game. Both teams on their coverage units doing a nice job of bottling up those receivers. 10-10 to go here in the third quarter. Under center is Schwabe. He's going to give it up to Erke up the middle, and he's going to get met and ripped down immediately. A big tackle by the Springs defense. Yeah, number 49, Jake Hoke again uh, meeting Erke in the backfield. They're actually going to give him forward progress back to the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be second and 10. Uh, but Hoke was all over that one, and these linebackers here uh, again as they did during the first quarter not so much in the second quarter but this is more first quarter ledger linebacker defense where these linebackers are able to uh, slice their way through the tiger offensive line and make the tackle three down linemen three five defense for springs up the middle looks like martin maybe up to the 33 yard line and yep, that was Martin on the carry there, and a nice job to get it into a manageable, yep. uh, looks like about a third and four coming up here as we see a couple uh, Tigers come on the field, including number eight, Matt Hendrick. Third and three from the 33 in quarter number three, 9-10 to go. Full house backfield again for Stratford. Springs now in a four down lineman set. They're going to give it to... And it's going to be on the ground. It's going to be on the ground. Going to be picked up and taken and ripped down. Springs has the ball to the 29-yard line. The first mistake by this Stratford offense. Yeah, ball jarred loose there on the big hit, and it was scooped up by number three, Mitchell Wachter. And as Wachter was uh, headed down the field, Schwabe uh, met him right away. The fumble there, uh, Hendrick with the fumble on the carry. And then Schwabe with uh, his arms wrapped around the waist of Walker here on this near sideline. And uh, many of the Springs players coming up and asking for the ball. <laughs> uh, Mitchell said, no, we're going to keep the ball, and we're going to make sure it's secure and have the ball on the 29-yard line. After picking up the fumble, he's now under center. Is the quarterback going to play action pass? Has Christensen across the middle of the end zone. Touchdown, Springs! Yep, perfectly executed play there, and that's what you do after a turnover. You go for that big strike right away, and the Ledgers worked it to perfection, and you knew sooner or later Christensen was going to get his, and he gets his with 8.48 left in the third on a big touchdown strike here for the Ledgers. 29 yards, perfect pass, and Christensen into the end zone right over the head of the defender. Yep, that was uh, Lance Heidman on the coverage there, and, and Christensen had him beat from the get-go. Uh, he uh, took off, and uh, Heidman was in a retreat stance right away, and as he broke to the post, Heidman had no chance to stay on him. Levi Poss in for the PAT, and it is perfectly through the uprights, and good. With 8.48 to go here in quarter number three, a 29-yard touchdown pass puts or ties the game up for Springs and Stratford, 848 will be back with the Springs kickoff after this. Experience the difference at Badger Title. Badger Title is Wisconsin's first full-service title insurance company. See Badger Title for extensive closing services, title insurance, letter reports, along with construction disbursements and inspections. Since 2001, Badger Title has been serving central Wisconsin with quality work that is second to none. Talk to Cheryl and Davina at Badger Title at 715-389-2900 or visit badgertitle.net. Looking for reliable high-speed internet? Look at Country Wireless. Country Wireless provides reliable high-speed internet to rural central Wisconsin with unlimited data, no usage caps, and speeds up to a blazing fast 7 meg. Want faster? Contact Country Wireless now to see if you qualify for 50 meg service and take advantage of all the internet has to offer. Go to countrywireless.com to get on your way to high speed internet. St. Mary Springs about to kick off. They go one play, 29 yards with the touchdown reception from Cade Christensen, and it is all tied up here. Springs scoring at the end of the first half, now scoring here with 8.48 to go in the third quarter. And it is all knotted up. Now Stratford has to get a little bit of their mojo back. 
Just a little bit of confidence back after the turnover and score for St. Mary Springs. Well, I'll tell you, Steve, in the spirit of uh, Al Michaels, uh, one of the premier uh, football announcers in my lifetime, uh, second only to John Madden, of course, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the St. Mary Springs ledger fans and faithful here are in full throat <laughs> at Camp Randall as they are jumping and bopping around cheering on their ledgers. A squibber at the 38th. At the 30-yard line, it's going to be rolled out of bounds. Oh, man. So very lucky. Derek Martin bobbled it, and St. Mary's almost caught another break. It's going to be first and 10 for the Stratford Tigers. Well, a, a good play call there by Coach Hyland to uh, kind of try to exploit this near side of the kick return unit for the Tigers. Uh, there was a hole between that 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 line, that first line on the 40-yard line, and then where Martin stood at about the 25, there was that 15-yard gap there. The kicker hit the hole perfectly. Martin playing with fire, <laughs> uh, couldn't quite get the ball in, and fortunately for the Tigers, it rolled harmlessly out of bounds. First and 10 for Stratford, 8.43 to go, ball on the 27-yard line. Schraube's going to roll out to his right, have no room. He's going to go down with the sack. Didn't throw it away in time, and a loss of three on the play. Sacked back to the 24-yard line. It's going to be second and 13. Carlos Ozel's there for uh, the Ledgers got in on the sack, and that was uh, just a uh, that was a coverage sack, is what that was. As there were really only two Tigers out on routes, and they were both blanketed double coverage put on both those receivers, uh, including uh, touchdown catcher Vaughn Bright to a touchdown earlier in this game. So only a two-receiver route, not a lot of places for Schwabe to throw the ball. Should have thrown it out of bounds instead of second and long. Bright and Martin are the two receivers near side. They're going to give it on the delay handoff up the middle and go nowhere. Maybe a gain of a yard to get back to the 25-yard line. And it's going to be third and long for Stratford at the 25 with under eight minutes to go here in quarter number three. Momentum starting to swing towards St. Mary Springs and all the things that they needed to have happen in the second half are now happening for them, just like everything the Tigers needed to have happen in the first half happened for them, yep. and momentum, a big, big deal in football. Two backs behind Schwabe. Vaughn Bright, the tight end on the near side. He's going to roll out is Schwabe. Going to give it to Erky on the screen. He's going to stay up to the 20, the 25, get a block to the 30, to the 35. And it's going to be very close to a first down, and they will give it to him at the 38-yard line. What an effort by Kate Erky. Kate Erky stiff-armed his way out of a tackle. It was going to be a loss on the play, as we see here uh, coming in on the tackle. It looked like that was number 15, Tim Schusler, or I'm sorry, 13, Carlos Ozels, and stiff-armed Ozels right to the ground. And then it was just a matter of a race between Erky and three ledger defenders and who could get to the 37-yard line first. And it was Erky who won that race by a half a yard. First and 10 now at the 39. <laughs> under seven minutes to go here in the third quarter. All knotted up at 14. Division 5 state championship game. Erky up the middle. A little delay handoff and waits for his blocks. And he will fall forward past the 40 to the 44-yard line. And another gain of five yards for Stratford. Nice job again by Erke uh, getting up and then seeing uh, Jacob Hoffman uh, in front of him, 195 pound 6'4 junior, tough not to see him, yeah. and instead sidestepped him to the left as he was running up this near hash mark and uh, got the ball uh, in the backfield around the 36 yard line, uh, saw his defender there, Kaufman, at the 40, sidestepped in and then worked his way up to the 44 yard line where the Tigers are now. Under center is Schwabe again. He's going to delay handoff again to Erke. He gets a head of steam past the 45 to the 46, 47 yard line. And gain a four. It's going to be third and two. Ledger's uh, able to score their touchdown on a similar draw play that the Tigers just ran there. And uh, both teams ran it pretty well. Uh, the uh, Ledger's draw happened to go for about 22 yards. This one went for about two, and it brings up a third and two for the Tigers. 5.40 to go, third quarter. Two backs behind Schwabe again. In motion goes Derek Martin. He's going to give it to Erke again. Far side, he's going to fall forward to the 50 to the 45, and he's going to get ripped down there nicely by the Ledger's defender. Yeah, the Tigers 45. fortunate there. Oakley Wrench was out in front of that play throwing a block and actually threw a block in the back. <laughs> Tigers fortunate that uh, 
uh, that the back judge didn't see that. Otherwise, they'd be in a different situation. It would be third and long. Instead, it's a first down on the run. And a nice job again by Cade uh, making his way down the field. That time as he ran to the far sideline and then cut it back up for the first down. 5-10 to go in the third quarter. Up the middle again goes. No, they're going to go to the outside. Derek Martin has room to the 30 to the 25. Going to get pushed out of bounds at the 20. Had me fooled. That was, I thought Erky had it. Martin had it on the outside and gained a, had a huge gain. And it's first down inside the red zone for Stratford. Yeah, Wachter, the only guy that could have stopped him, and, and he actually trailed on the play uh, as Martin was able to, to beat the Ledger defensive line to the outside corner. And as soon as he beat him to the corner, he turned around and ran. He ran right past Matthew Mall, and Wachter had to push him from behind to save the touchdown. First and 10 at the 20 with five minutes to go in the third quarter. Schwabi under center, full house formation again, gives it to Erke, and he gets swallowed up and pushed back immediately. That's Orlandoni again with a big hit and a big tackle. Yep, Orlandoni there combining with number 76, Mitchell Burns. So 250 pounds and 210 pounds collectively taken down Kate Erke for no gain on the play. Ball remains on the 20-yard line, but... Uh, uh, Steve, here come the Tigers right, right back down the field after the defense gives up the touchdown. Tigers now threatening from the 20. A big, a couple of big runs by Erke and Martin and going to give it to Martin on the far side on the pitch. He's got room up to the 20, gets tripped up in the backfield. Yeah, ball came out of the end. He was down as that happened. Uh, Kate Erke there turned into a, a lead block fullback and was not able to deliver the block. If uh, Eric is able to get his block or at least get in the way of that, there's a chance Martin turns the corner and scores six. Uh, as it is, it's a, a gain of three on the play, and uh, it, uh, Cade in the postgame last week talked about some of the pancakes that the other running backs were able to deliver. <laughs> Tigers could have used him to deliver a pancake that time. A big third down. They are seven, seven of 11 on third downs, third and seven, and going to give it to Martin on the far side again, and he's going to... Fall inside the 15 to the 12. It's going to be fourth and two for the Stratford Tigers. Similar situation uh, back in the second quarter. Tigers had the ball uh, fourth and short from the seven. Coach Tubbs took a timeout, elected to keep his offense on the field, didn't kick the field goal. Uh, that perhaps, if made, could have gave the Tigers a 10-point lead headed into halftime. Now, same similar situation, ball in the 12. That would be a 29-yard field goal for Austin, and instead, again, Tubb sends offense back on the field for this crucial fourth and two for the Tigers. 3-10 to go, third quarter from the 12-yard line. Three and third and two, or fourth and two, excuse me, and Erke's going to fall forward for the first down at the nine-yard line. Yeah, second effort there. He was stopped initially, uh, kept his feet, though, uh, but he uh, the offensive line was pushed back here as we watch this replay, and uh, we'll watch the... Uh, the far side of the Ledger defensive line here. Initial pushback uh, was there, but then Eric uh, uh, was able to, to get forward, fall forward, uh, like you said, Steve, and get the first down. It's a first and goal, Tigers. First and goal from the 90-yard line, under three minutes to go here in the third quarter. We'll have some breaking baseball news for you in between the third and fourth oh, quarters. Okay. Very exciting news if you're a Brewers fan. Kater, he has it on the outside of the five to the four, stays up to the three-yard line. And it's going to be second and goal from the three for Stratford. Eric again flexing his muscles and uh, his, his quads as he uh, rumbles his way towards the end zone. But, uh, Steve, do I get a special prize if I guess ahead of time what the news sure. is? I think I probably know. It's, I think it's uh, – well, I, listen, I won't give it away. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, I think uh, Wisconsin baseball fans, Brewer fans are going to be uh, pleased with the news. Yep. Got two minutes before the end of the – Two minutes left in the third quarter. Second and three from the three. Second and goal from the three. Full house backfield again. They're going to give it to Turkey. He's going to bounce outside, fall forward, and gain nothing on the play. Yeah, he made Christensen miss. Christensen coming up from a safety spot as uh, everybody's down in the box uh, for the Ledgers. All 11 were within about five yards of the snap of that football. Made Christensen miss, but couldn't make the next guy miss. And uh, we'll see now the Tigers gave up. Uh, or passed up on field goal opportunities from the 7 and the 12. I would guess if this doesn't convert to a touchdown, they're also not going <laughs> to kick a field goal from the 2. Keith Erke, 30 touchdowns on the year, and they're going to give it up to him again. He's going to get swallowed at the 2, and it's going to be 4th and goal from the 2-yard line now. 
Yeah, and Orland Doney again came up from his linebacker spot as he's making things happen from both sides of the ball as we see Max Schwabe here walk towards the sidelines and uh, not with any real pace there. And, uh, well, now he comes back on the field. I think Schwabe wanted to, to get a little bit closer uh, idea as to what this play was going to be, but, a, but five or six Tigers coming in and coming out, uh, and it will be a field goal attempt as we do get number 62 uh, 60, yeah, 62, Reed Curtis coming on for the field goal attempt. I didn't think that was going to happen. 20-yard field goal attempt for Reed Curtis, and it is through the uprights and perfect. And Stratford takes a 17-14 to 14 lead with 38 seconds to go here in quarter number three in the Division Five state championship game from Madison. Introducing the new way to survive planning a party. Hire Gabrielle Lynn and company to do all of the preparation, setup, shopping, decoration, and cleaning for you. Gabrielle Lynn and company is a local party planning business with pricing options to fit any size budget. Call 715-630-4381 or go to GabrielleLinnandCompany.com for more details. Gabrielle Lynn and company for your next party event. Clear your calendars for December 9th and have an experience like no other. It's the Toys for Tots Piano Guys Concert at the Performing Arts Center in Wisconsin Rapids. Join us for this fantastic benefit concert featuring the dueling piano talents of the new Piano Guys to benefit the community of Wisconsin Rapids and Toys for Tots Toy Drive. Go to Facebook now and search Toys for Tots Piano Guys Wisconsin Rapids. Tickets are available now for this fun event for a great cause. It's the Toys for Tots Piano Guys Concert in Wisconsin Rapids on December 9th. So, Steve, it happens with uh, extreme regularity. Uh, for anybody that knows me, uh, I will predict uh, something that will happen, and then the opposite happens. <laughs> and and uh, the other thing, too, is uh, I don't think like a coach. I, I, I don't, and I suppose that's a good thing. That's why I'm up here and they're, they're down here. But something just to, to kind of think about with uh, we've got 38 seconds left here before the fourth quarter. Again, Coach Tubbs passed up the field goal attempt from the 7, passed up another one from the 12, and took this one from the two, and uh, Curtis easily made yep. uh, the, the field goal. His extra points boom through the uprights. Uh, you just wonder sometimes about coaching strategy and, and how a coach's mind thinks and why a field goal was good there but not good over there. Yeah, absolutely, and that's one of those things, again, that Coach Tubbs will most likely be asked about after the game, um, win, lose, or draw, or yeah. win or lose. I wouldn't say win, lose, or draw. I can't draw in state <laughs> championship game, but, yeah, it's going to be one of those things that you – that you get asked about later on in the game. Reed Curse to set to kick off left to right. What? And a high end over on kick. He'll be taken at the 15. And oh, to the 25, have room oh. and fall forward. And a, another helmet came off past the 30. And it's going to be first and 10 at the 32 yard line for Springs. All right. So we talk about momentum in football. We identified uh, after that Springs touchdown. And then the defense came back on the field. They initially had the Tigers stopped back here, and they had momentum. Well, the Tigers beat through that momentum, and now I would say Uncle Mo is on nobody's side. We're about <laughs> even on momentum right now, and uh, we'll see now if the Tigers can take that, that field goal and get defensive mojo back. 32 seconds left in the third quarter. Going to be right up the middle, and likes just keep on moving, and the whistle finally blowing at the 36-yard line. A gain of four. It's going to be second and six. And that should do it here for the third quarter of the Division Five State Championship game. St. Mary Springs and Stratford Tigers. And it looks like they will run it out here in quarter number three. It is Stratford Tigers 17, St. Mary Springs Ledgers 14. We'll be back after this with the fourth quarter. Oh, well, here, well, just, just, do you have your phone with you? Yeah. Okay, just record this on your phone and then just print okay. on
All right, as we are about to begin the fourth quarter here at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, uh, again, we will uh, thank our sponsors and thank everybody for tuning into the broadcast today. And uh, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times, and I'll say it a million more times. Uh, please support these sponsors. They're the ones who make this broadcast completely free to you. Uh, and for better or for worse, they're the ones who sent us down to Madison today, <laughs> and you get us as a result of that. Um, but uh, you know, I'll use uh, I'll use the example of uh, of the Marshfield restaurant, right? You're 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 going to need lunch, <laughs> you're going to need something to eat, and you're going to be in Marshfield at a certain time, and Scotty's Pizza for that matter too. And you may as well choose one of those places because when you do, it allows them to continue sponsoring with us. Again, you got to eat anyway, otherwise yeah. you're going to go hungry and exactly. die. Exactly. <laughs> so I don't want that to happen to you. So when you go out to eat in Marshfield, uh, choose our sponsors, and that enables us to keep bringing this uh, free high school sports coverage to you all year round. Steve Maves, it is time for the fourth quarter. Yeah, it's going to be St. Mary's will begin things at the 36-yard line and the big news. Out oh, of yeah, I forgot. Big news uh, reveal. Here we go. Yeah. Drum roll. Christian Yelich is your National League most valuable player. After leading the Brewers to the National League Championship Series, he finished with a 326 batting average, 36 home runs, and 110 RBIs, one of the best free agent pickups the Brewers probably have ever had and that was going to be taken near side of football on the ground and ball it's going to be loose down there and it's Tiger's ball will have it Tiger's ball as the ball comes loose it was jostled out of the hands of the ball carrier I, the ball came loose so fast I, I lost track of uh, who was even carrying the ball Steve but as we look at the pile and uh, guess who gets up from that pile Ben Barton, yep. number 52, and uh, Derek Martin, number four. These two in on uh, on the play and making things happen wherever they go. If you want to know what's going to happen on the football <laughs> field, you follow number 52, Ben Barton. Yeah, Ben Barton, the Wisconsin Badger in a couple of years. He will be down here in Madison. Just a junior, one of the top juniors in the state of Wisconsin on the offensive line, especially here for the Stratford Tigers. Now, 11.52, that might be the break the Stratford was looking for. And not that time. He was looking for the... Yeah, Martin with the handoff there. And, uh, and Big 76 comes in to make the play again. Mitchell Burns and uh, Burns making the play here <laughs> and uh, making things happen on the football field. It's a loss of four on the play. Going to be second and 13, 11.30 to go. Fourth quarter, ball on the 41-yard line. Stratford 17, Springs 14. <laughs> Springs hasn't lost a game in a couple of years. And Stratford trying to hand the St. Mary Springs their first loss this year. Going to fall forward to the 35 yard line is Kate Erke, and it's going to be third down. Well, got, got a little bit of it back there. It's going to be a third and long, and uh, it, as the fourth quarter started, just eight seconds is all it took for the Tigers <laughs> to get the ball back uh, as they recovered that fumble with 11.52 on the game clock. And uh, Tigers now, again, looking to do a couple things, looking to run the clock here as much as they can, get first downs, and I th they're going to have to score again here yep. in this game. I don't think they're going to keep the ledgers at 14. Yeah, we've seen St. Mary's, they can strike quickly. And going to give it on the second handoff. That's going to be up the middle and fall to the 30-yard line. That's Eli Drexler. And it's going to be a gain of, gain of five, and it's going to be fourth and two. Yeah, Drexler with a little bit of wiggle there as he worked his way through the hole that was opened up just off tackle on the right side of the Tigers' offensive line over on the far side. And just enough wiggle to, to get the, to get the uh, ledger linebacker off balance and then burst through the hole. And again, Coach Tubbs keeps his offense on the field as uh, he's maybe sensing, uh, keeping this momentum and, and sensing this this championship game and the whole gravity of it here with under 10 minutes left. Yeah, they're going to have to call a timeout. Stratford will use their timeout. The back judge counting for the play clock. 9.51 to go in the fourth quarter. Stratford 17, St. Mary Springs 14 will be back with the fourth quarter, or with the fourth down after this. Marshfield Family Restaurant on South Central Avenue in Marshfield is ready for their grand opening on November 20th. The new team at Marshfield Family Restaurant has a great menu and a new look at service as this iconic downtown Marshfield restaurant reopens. Marshfield Family Restaurant is also open on Thanksgiving for you and your family to enjoy a no-fuss, no-cleanup Thanksgiving dinner. Marshfield Family Restaurant, with their grand opening on Tuesday, November 20th, 
located at 443 South Central Avenue in Marshfield. Well, Steve, we, we talked about momentum here a little bit, and, and this play upcoming here, this fourth and two with 9.51 left in the game, is going to have a lot to say about momentum. Tigers accomplished the first down. They're going to have uh, 26, 27 yards between them and the end zone, and, and all the, the wind at their sails, uh, quite figuratively and literally, <laughs> as the wind is still blowing uh, right behind them. Ledger's defense powers up here and chases the Tigers off the field. They're going to have momentum as they send their offense back on the field. Yeah, they're going to have very good field position as well. If they're able to stop them, it's going to be fourth down at the 30-yard line. I said it before, the St. Mary Springs team can strike fast, and we've seen it on the touchdown to Christensen in that 95-yard that uh, drive as well. Schwabe under center, go to hand it off to Erke, and he's going to get a first down, falling to Ooh, the 30 or the 27 yard line had a great play, a great uh, blocking for Stratford. Yeah, he dove ahead to make sure that that ball was across the line to gain, and it was by about a half a yard. And as he ran off tackle here to the left, uh, he got a nice block there from Wrench, who was split on the inside. And then it was number 34, Devin Denny, leading the way as the fullback and springing him loose around the corner. And uh, like I said, he gained that first yard or first down by a half a yard. And it helps a lot when you have a left tackle like Ben Bart out there, too, mm -hmm. to, to seal the edge for you. And going to near side, that's Derek Martin. He's going to fall, try and fall inside the 25 to the 24 yard line. A nice productive gain on first down. Ledger's now starting to uh, attempt to rip at that ball. They really hadn't, I haven't seen that in the first couple quarters, but again, as this clock winds down here, we're just about at nine minutes left to play here uh, for the game. Nine minutes left in this Division V championship game. The Ledger's now getting a little anxious and starting to rip at that ball for, uh, at the Stratford ball carriers come at them. Springs all three timeouts left. Stratford just used their first before that fourth down. And oh, big hit behind the line of scrimmage on Chase Flank. He's going to lose three yards. Yeah, that was 79, Billy Schroth, and we called his name a couple times in the first half. 6'4", 250-pound freshman wow. is Schroth coming through there, and he had diagnosed that play right away as uh, he beat Dawson Moan as uh, Moan was pulling uh, that way, and, and he, he came right in behind that hole as Moan pulled to the right, filled that hole, and met, uh, met the ball carrier in the backfield for the loss. He could be a teammate of Ben Barton in a few years if he keeps up playing like this. Rolling to his right is Schwabe being chased. He's going to throw it in. Yeah, he's able to get rid of it uh, just before he ran out of bounds. So he saves his team about six yards there as he was being chased right down the 35-yard line. The <laughs> ball was snapped at the 27-yard line. And uh, Martin came open late, but by that time, Schwabe had two defenders uh, in front of him. And at the uh, at the five foot seven Schwabe, uh, not, not able to see Martin down there. And as we watch the replay, Martin was even a little bracketed, uh, including <laughs> by one Cade Christensen. So a fourth and long upcoming, and the Tigers again keep their offense on the field. They're looking to get this clock back started and back on their side of things again. 8.06 to go in the fourth quarter. Schwabe under center. Big fourth and 11. And it's going to be back to pass is Schwabe. Far side and over the head of Vaughn Bright. And it's going to be a turnover on downs over to St. Mary Springs on the twenty-eight on their own 28-yard line. Yeah, Bright never had a chance at that one. Schwabe overfired him uh, by by a few feet. Uh, Vaughn Bright again, a uh, tall receiver, six foot four, a uh, good post player for the Stratford Tigers during basketball season, uh, which, uh, like it or not, at the conclusion of this game will start next week. Uh, here, at boys basketball will will take place, and uh, Barton and Bright and uh, Wrench and some of the others here will will join the basketball team. Uh, but Bright not even at his height, yeah. not able to to bring that pass down. Yes, yeah, we'll see what Springs can do after. They have it over, turnover on down to 8.02 to go in the fourth quarter. We'll be back after this. A great career is waiting for you at Rail Transport. Don't have your CDL? Get paid to get your CDL. It's even better than free truck driver training. Rail Transport will train you to get your CDL and pay you during the training. You'll be hired on day one, paid $500 weekly, and trained by the leader in the trucking industry. Experienced drivers start at 59 cents per mile. Start your career with a company that invests in you. Go to rail.jobs now and get your career started. 
Osterman Electric is your electrical contractor specializing in residential and commercial wiring. No job is too small, and any job is the right size for Osterman Electric. Safety, quality, dependability, it's not the norm at Osterman, it's the only expectation. The team at Osterman is ready for your call now at 715-937-3706 or see them on Facebook. Osterman Electric is your electrical contractor specializing in residential and commercial wiring. Back to Camp Randall Stadium here in Madison as the St. Mary Springs Ledgers will have the ball first and 10 on their own 28-yard line with 8.02 to go in the fourth quarter. And it will be the... It'll be the Ledgers to see if they can get the lead here. Big hit on the quarterback on the pitch. Far side, Ezra Tucker is going to be ripped out of bounds at the 34-yard line, a gain of six, and it's going to be second and four. That was Bo Gross coming in from his middle linebacker spot. He's a 186-pound, 5'10 sophomore for the Tigers, and uh, he had this uh, ledger quarterback lined in the sights and put a good hit on him. Uh, but unfortunately for Mr. Gross, that ball was already out of the quarterback's hands and on the way for that six-yard gain. Hamlin, the receiver on the far side, and going to hand it off to that 49. That's Jake Hawk, and he's going to have room, and he's got to get tripped up. Nice defensive play right at the 45-yard line on the far side. Yeah, number 15, Oakley Wrench had a chance to uh, get Hawk down a little bit sooner than that. Didn't take the best angle, and before you know it, uh, Hawk, uh, with speed that Wrench didn't quite calculate for, uh, had turned the corner and turned up field. Uh, it could have been, uh, it probably still wouldn't have been a first down either way, but another six yards on the play after uh, the Wrench uh, mistimed angle on Hawk. First and 10 now for Springs, up the middle, and going to fall forward for a couple of yards to the 47 yard, 48 yard line. Gain of three, and it's going to be second and seven. Yeah, Trevor Denny and Jacob Michelson in on the stop there for the Tigers. Uh, minimal uh, gain, like you said, Steve, a gain of three. And it's uh, the ball placed right at the left side of the Wisconsin W, right in the middle of the field. And with 7.08 left to go, it is crunch time now for both teams as they head down the final stretch of this Division Five championship game. Kate Christensen back into the game, and Ezra Tucker gets ripped down after another game. Inside Stratford territory, however, to the 49-yard line. And it's going to be third down for St. Mary Springs. Yeah, Ben Barton on the tackle there. And uh, a nice, uh, nice form tackle by Barton as he had beat his offensive line counterpart in front of him. And... Uh, and again, I, you know, we don't want to overplay our hand here, but uh, these are all pretty critical yep. moments here in a three-point game and a big third down for both teams here. And a kicker like Levi Boss, who is just a sophomore, but saw him kick earlier. Very excellent. Back to pass, and it's going to be caught by Christensen. What a catch by Kate Christensen at the 41-yard line, first 42-yard line, first down for Springs. Yeah, Kate Christensen, no match out there for Eli Drexler. Uh, as we take a look at uh, at uh, Drexler comes in at five foot eleven, Christensen six foot four, <laughs> and the ball about another foot above Christensen's head that he went up and expertly high pointed, caught it with two hands, came right back down. Nice pitch and catch for the Ledgers. Christensen out of the game now. Uh, there's going to be a flag offsides on Stratford. Neutral zone infraction on the Tigers. Yeah, that's indeed the call there. And again, Stratford kind of looking for that edge right now. They're reeling here a little bit in these final moments uh, in this game. And, and they know, we know, they all know, uh, they've got to uh, get that first best step. If they can beat their guy on that first move, they got a chance here to stop these big running backs for the Ledgers and movement just a little too soon trying to get that edge for the Tigers. So at least first and five now with 5.52 to go. Going to give it up the middle and fall forward. Not quite get to the 35. It's going to be to the 36-yard line. Yeah, Michelson there uh, beat his guy, as we just talked about. It's just a matter at this point of beating the guy in front of you. And uh, Michelson beat his guy and wrapped up uh, the running back uh, by his ankles and brought him down for a gain of about a yard and a half. Second and four now at the 36. Under five and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. Steve, Matthew. tense moments ahead here yeah. at Camp Randall. <laughs> Matthew Mole, the receiver to the far side. Kate Christensen, near side, up the middle. Goes Orladoni, and he's going to get stood up and driven back. But 
Yeah, uh, get rugby scrum had ensued there uh, right at the at the near hash mark, and uh, he's going to be short of the first down by just a couple inches. It's third down. The Ledgers will have two downs to get about an inch and a half uh, if uh, if they don't bring out the chains for a measurement. And our white hat is taking a look and, and will give him the first down instead. So it's a first down Ledgers from the 32-yard line. And a big first down there for St. Mary Springs. Clock runs. Five minutes to go here in the Division Five State Championship game. Stratford and St. Mary Springs. That Tigers defense going to have to stiffen up right now and uh, slow this uh, Ledger offensive attack. And Ezra Tucker on the far side. He's going to run to the 27-yard line. A gain of... Five and it's going to be second and five. Yeah, big, uh, big running backs here starting to wear down this uh, Tiger defense. 210 pound, uh, I'm sorry, 175 pound Tucker. Uh, Tigers had their defense slanted to the right, and that's exactly where the Ledger play went. Uh, but that Ledger offensive line and those big running backs uh, just too much for the Tigers to overcome and a big chunk, almost six yards on that first down play. 4.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. Back to pass. And got hit while he threw it. And it's going to be over the head of the defender and not quite reaching Christensen. But what a big hit yeah. on the quarterback on the throw. Trevor Denis coming uh, screaming right up the middle there as uh, he was able to get past the, the center. Shot right through that A-gap right between the center and the left guard for the Ledgers. And uh, got right in his face there as he threw the ball. And the ball overthrown as a result. And that will bring up. Uh, yet another one of those uh, big plays here in this game as we start thinking about the plays that made a championship team. This is one of them right here. See what kind of offense play Bob Highland has dr drawn up here. That one's going to be pitched to the near side. He's going to run out to the 25. Nice open field tackle. And the clock continues to run at the 25-yard line, a gain of two, and it's going to be fourth and three with four minutes to go. That was Derek Martin doing what he's been taught to do since he was in youth football, and now he's a senior here with the Stratford Tigers. And he just flowed to the ball, scraped right down that defensive line from his linebacker position. And